Hi everyone and welcome to the book refuge and welcome to my January wrap up part two. As I said previously, this is the first time I've needed to split my uh, wrap ups before. And there have been times in the past where I hesitated, like I thought maybe I should do it. But this month, I just knew it was a thing. Like when I did my last one, I had already read, I think like 18 books and it was just appropriate for me to split it in half. So this time I'm going to go over my entire stats for the month and I'll go over the rest of the books that I have completed. And it continued to be a really great month. I did my 24 hour readathon, which I will post a video about up there where I got through um, five books on my um, Romanceopoly TBR. I'm participating in that partially this year going forward um, just to help me get through a lot of the romances that I love. I think it's a really fun thing to do um, done by Under the Covers book blog as well as Jess at Peace Love Books. If you haven't heard about that yet, there's still time to jump on. January just got done. So let's go ahead and go over my total stats. I'm going to try to put them up right here so that you know. Um, so in total, um, this is going to include the first part and the second part, I read 29 books. One of them was a novella, but the other 28 were full books. I read a total of 10,931 pages, which averages to 377 pages per day. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't do any audible this month. I just was more in a visit like in a physical reading mood, like I wanted to be reading the words myself. Um, and I say that because I read 15 physical books and 14 ebooks on my beautiful Kindle paper white. I love my Kindle paper white because it has the light, but you can still dim it during the daytime so that it just looks like regular book pages. Anyway, plug for that. So um, talk about the star ratings that I had. <laughs> I will talk more about this in a minute, but total, I had 13 five-star books, six 4.5s, four four-stars, two 3.5-stars, one three-star, one 2.5-star, and two DNFs, which I already talked about in the last one. So in my last wrap-up, which I will, of course, link up here to see the first part, I went over 12 of the books that I read which means we have 26 books and one novella to talk, I'm sorry, 16 books and one novella to talk about. I wanna talk about, um, we're starting with the lowest book that I read in the second half of the year, is one I actually just read last night. And that one is called On the Plus Side by Tabitha Vargo. Um, this I only gave 2.5 stars to. And I was really disappointed actually, because I haven't read, I am sorry there, in my eye. I haven't read too many books with um, plus size main characters. I've read a few different ones throughout my life and being a plus size woman myself, um, you know, obviously I don't mind, you know, reading rep about that. It's not my favorite thing to do because I find that it can get super tacky because while I do know as myself being a plus size woman that it is something you think about all the time, the way that this one was, it got really tacky really fast and I felt like it was being shoved down my throat that she felt uncomfortable with her weight. But the thing is, she doesn't act too uncomfortable about it. She's confident in a lot of certain ways. And then her love interest, who in the beginning, he doesn't give her the time of day because she's plus size, even when he no longer cares about that. It still gets mentioned all the time. So I don't, I know that sounds weird. Some people will tell me that that's realistic, but hey, I I live it. I know. I don't think about it all the time. There are different times in my life where I think about my weight differently. And if you've been in this channel a while, you know, I've went through a journey to change that part of myself for my health, not because I hated myself. I'm doing it because I love myself. And there were just some other issues. So this, okay, anyway, let me, I don't want to talk about it too much because these lower starred ones, I don't care enough. The point is I don't recommend it. 
Also, this was a new adult because the main character, she is uh, 20 and I think 23 is the age of the hero, supposed to be the hero. This is about um, this girl and her mother basically overhears this young man trying to get a bank loan to save him and his father's mechanic shop and the mother overhears that he needs money and so she offers him money to date her daughter, give her a confidence boost, and then dump her later on or make sure that they break up. And he's not allowed to sleep with her, but he's supposed to boost her confidence and make her feel better about herself because she's never had a boyfriend who, like, treated her well and all these things. And right away, number one, this is a trope that I hate. I abhor the trope of someone being paid to date someone. Also, it went on way too long. For this book being so short. Also, this book had the surprise baby trope. And not just a surprise baby. A surprise baby by someone who was told they previously couldn't have children. Which some of my friends that I have on BookTube, they have had fertility issues. And they find it extremely offensive when a story, there's someone who told they can't have one. And then it's just a surprise. Because then these people, like, aren't using condoms or protection just because you can't get pregnant doesn't mean there aren't other things that can go wrong. And I don't know, the whole thing, if it hadn't only been 280 pages, I wouldn't, like, and it was on my Kindle, so I just went with it. But this one kind of offended me. And honestly, it didn't just have to do that the character was plus size. It had to do more with how this author told the story and the language she used and constantly using chubby like that makes it less offensive and just there was a lot so anyway wasn't going to talk about this too long already wasted too much time moving along um the next book I uh that is my 3.5 star is marrying my billionaire boss this one is by I might not have it in front of me I'll put it up here I always forget to write the author down when I do my little sheet right here. Um, this one was about this girl that she is an assistant to this one guy and such and such. There's this bachelor auction where someone is supposed to bid on him for charity and then win and then get to spend like a weekend with him. Um, and it's supposed to be like in Vegas, they're supposed to spend a weekend together. And he has a psycho ex-girlfriend who is going to try to buy him. So he gives his like credit card basically over to his assistant and says, please purchase me because I don't want to be with this crazy psycho girl. These two go to Vegas, end up getting married. And again, surprise baby. So I read two surprise baby books and I don't have a problem with surprise baby. I have a problem when it happens this way in these and I didn't really like it. It was really funny though. And there were some aspects that were cute. Um, it's just the conflict that came up. This couple was doing so well, like breaking through all the conflicts. They had really good communication. And then it still slipped into a miscommunication trope right at the end. Like it was doing so good. This was going to be a 4.5, maybe a five star. Cause I was just, I was just handing out the five stars, like freaking rain this month. And then it went that way. And I just had to, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Next, I read Floored by Melanie Harlow. This was a 3.5 for me as well. I was very excited for this one because I really loved the Cloverleaf Farms trilogy by Melanie Harlow. One of those books was on my favorite list last year. And then I read Floored, which is actually like the fourth book in the French series by her. But the other books didn't look that interesting to me. So this one was about this girl that she's a dance teacher and one night <laughs> she's in the shower and a burglar breaks in and steals her phone and her purse and uh, a bunch of her stuff and then gets out of there. Thankfully it doesn't hurt her or anything. But then when she calls the police, one of the police officers who shows up was her high school bully who was a jock and kind of a jerk and he used to tease her a lot and they had um, a lot of conflict back in the day and they meet up and he is super sexy now. He's a police officer, 
kind of a jerk. It's not too much of like a bully in present day. Um, they just still have that kind of like tension because she's like, you made my days kind of miserable for me when I was younger. And he's just like, you need to get over that. I was a teenager. I'm sorry, move along. And they end up starting kind of a friends with benefit situation. However, we, uh, number one, this is a single point of view romance novel, which I don't read too many of those. Usually you get a dual POV in this kind of story. Melanie Harlow's other stories that I read were all dual POV and this one wasn't. And it became clear to me that the reason this wasn't a dual POV is because I think his name is Charlie. Sorry that I don't have it written down, but I think his name is Charlie. He has a secret and you know, they're in a friends with benefits situation. So he's not supposed to have to explain himself, but the, the heroine is like, right, we're in, you know, we're in a friends with benefit and they're trying to make him look super shady to her. And the only way that works, especially once we find out his secret is because it was single POV, because if we'd had a dual POV, we number one would have been an really annoyed that he didn't explain to her what his secret is but number two we also would have understood it and it would have taken all of the tension out and just made it really annoying and when we found out what his secret is I already knew what it was gonna be and that's why it's only a 3.5 star for me because this was pretty sexy this was pretty hot the way Melanie Harlow's other trilogy I read is or series I don't know if she's continuing that but it was only 3.5 because I don't like the trope. I didn't like the secret and the way it was handled. And it just didn't, it, it made, Char, they try to make up for it in the end because once Charlie shares his secret, he like has all these reasons for it, but I just didn't like it. Okay, let's keep moving. Next, I finished Soul of the Sword by Julie Kagawa. This was a book I've had on my TBR and been trying to read since last June when it came out, but I'm okay that I waited because the third book comes out, I think, in April, and the cliffhanger to this was super intense. So there's not too much that I can like say about this one because it's the second book in a series, but the first book is Shadow of the Fox. Let's see if there's a picture. There's not a picture, but it is based pretty deeply in, um, I think this is Japanese. I'm sorry if I just made that up, but it's set pretty, um, deeply in like folklore of like, um, kind of like the Eastern part of the world. And there is, um, like demons and gods. And, um, there is a temple and a dragon scroll and they're trying to protect this dragon scroll and it was really good. I loved Shadow of the Fox and I love this one. This was a four star for me. I feel like if I hadn't gotten halfway into this book and then paused that it would have been a higher ranking but your girl's just got to rank how she's got to rank. Um, I really loved how the relationships progressed, friendships and other things as well as the villain in this book. This book was part of my um, TBR challenge for myself. Pick one with a very um was this one pick someone with a very powerful villain, I think was the prompt for this one. Because Heike Mono, he is the demon who is in this sword. And at the end of the last book, something happened and he's our villain. And so we're dealing with the soul that's in the sword now. And I guess that's the most vague I can make it, but it's really enjoyable. This is um, Own Voices, I believe, because Julie Kagawa is... Anyway, this book was really fun, really liked it. I'm very looking forward to Night of the Dragon is the third book, and now I'm ready for it. Let's go. Next, ooh, I'm so excited. I read The Hunt and the Chase, and this is by Aliana McPherson. Sorry if I mispronounced that. I was reached out to her, or she reached out to me at the beginning of the month asking me to check out The Hunt, and then The Chase uh, is should be out now. I think it came out on um, January 28th, so it should be out. You should be able to see it now. But there, these are the first two books in this series. This series is so hard to explain <laughs> because it sounds like a mixture of all the tropes you might have read before. I did a really detailed 
Goodreads review for both of these. So if you go to my Goodreads, the link is always in the, the description. You can get a better explanation, but it is about wolves. They don't go by werewolves, but that's what they are. And there's this um, pack of them. And the main character, her name is Mele, Mele, Mele. Um, she is deaf and she has been homeschooled her whole life and she goes to school for the first time and she has an interpreter she's waiting on there and she is trying to make friends. And the first day of school, she can hear the voice of this one boy in her head. And she's never been able to hear anyone before and they have this connection and he can speak into her head and she can answer him that way. And she is freaked out by this and is quickly approached by him and his friend, her name is Brianna, uh, sorry, Brianna. Too much Outlander, I wanna call them all Brianna when I read that name now. Um, and we find out that she is connected to this character. Let me see if I can find his name, sorry. Let's see if I... Uh, I didn't write it down. I literally can't remember his name right now and it's frustrating me. What's his name? I can't think of it right now, but he is going to be the next alpha. His father's the alpha right now and she is meant to be his mate as well as she may be magical too and I don't want to spoil all of the magical creatures that are involved and again I know this sounds like stuff you've read before I know however number one if you do like those kind of things I think you should give this a try because it follows a lot of tropes I've seen before there's a lot of magical creatures involved the world building is excellent. The relationships in this are amazing. And not just the main couple. This is YA. There's nothing explicit in it so far um, that I've read anyway. It's kept pretty like, it definitely sits in YA. But it's also very smart. So, man, I'm sorry if this isn't a good explanation. But I gave the first one, I gave a four star. And in my review for that, if you'll read it, I said... I will probably up my rating of this if the whole series can like can cash the check that the author is writing us because she just keeps introducing more mythology and she does it so cleverly and there's lots of POVs in this but not an overwhelming amount and we get introduced to the evils in different levels but my favorite part is that the pack really is a family and so um Aliana or that's the author um Mele she really gets welcomed into this family and of course there's drama going on and there's a prophecy and there's all those things you'd see in this kind of fantasy i would call it kind of urban fantasy but it's almost like contemporary fantasy that is so weird to say but it has that vibe where it's like you're living in this world there's the same technology we have all these things and there's a fantasy element so i feel like that's urban fantasy i'm bad with knowing that stuff but it was so fun because the pack connections are amazing. And so the way it works is there's like the alpha and then he has a beta. And then whoever the mate to the alpha is, that mate also has her own protectors. And so as like Mele is finding out that she is supposed to be the mate to this person. And number one, this is Faded Mates, but it's also completely her choice. She's free to reject this. And that's what a lot of the story is about is like, if she's going to buy into this, if she's going to be a part of this family, part of this pack, like what that means, um, which is just fascinating. So I love these kinds of stories. Um, and oh, that's what I'm saying. And so I gave the first one four stars. I gave the chase 4.5 stars. And I just really liked where it's going. And the next one, I think she's going to be, she's going to have that one out in March or April. Um, and I cannot wait. I really loved it. She doesn't have enough people reading her books. The first one is on Kindle Unlimited. I think the second one is too. So it, if you have that service, it costs you nothing and you should give it a try um, and tell the author I sent you. I get nothing out of it. I just want her to know she's supported and that she's doing good work because I want her to keep writing these books. All right. Next, I read Unrequited um, by whoever this says, again, sorry. This one I gave four stars to. This book was so interesting. I read a lot of taboo books this month. We haven't even gotten to all of them yet. Um, this one is about a girl who she is in love with her friend and she's been stalking him. Um, 
but it's not working out. And she ends up having a fling with her professor. So she's in college. She has a fling with her professor who he's married. He's in a very rocky relationship. His wife keeps leaving him. And he ends up in kind of a twisted relationship with this girl. And I'm not saying it's healthy. I'm not saying it's right. But there's a lot of layers of things being taken care of. So this professor, he has a son. Um, his wife, who keeps leaving him, didn't want to have this son. But he convinced her um, to have the child. And now she's been suffering with postpartum depression a lot. She's been ha There's trigger warnings for suicide. Um, thankfully, nothing dangerous with the child at all. Like that's it's it's his wife dealing with things, um, and then, but he starts falling for this girl, and because of her stalker tendencies, she starts kind of using them on him, and he because of like the struggles he's having with his wife he kind of just like throws up his hands and like gives into it and I don't like reading books about cheating so I'm not pressuring this one oh I'm never pressuring these onto you but I'm not recommending this one as highly that's why it's only four stars for me even though where it went in the second half of the book the kind of feelings I was feeling would equate to a five star book because you're about to see some other books that have that feeling for me however because this one starts with cheating and also how he treats her a little bit. I'm okay with that because she wants to be treated that way. Like I'm okay with situations where if you're a little like aggressive with people and kind of like, like meaner, but the person wants you to do it. I'm okay with it because we can consent to whatever we want. Not everyone else has to understand it, but it was difficult to read in parts and the postpartum depression his wife's going through and the decision she's making and like not letting him help because he wants to help. And then his helplessness overflows and he's in this kind of commanding relationship with this student. It um, blows up in a few different ways, but it was pretty good. So yeah, I read Unrequited. So I read Credence by Penelope Douglas. I have a full review and um, book chat for this that I will link up above. Credence is about this girl named Tiernan who her parents do a murder-suicide and leave her alone. She's 17 years old. She's 10 weeks away from turning 18. And she's planning to just, like, live with her mom's assistant and, like, stay where she's at until she turns 18. Um, her parents were rich, so she's an heiress, basically. But she finds out that her dad had, like, a younger stepbrother. And this stepbrother, her uncle Jake, has two sons, um, Caleb and... Noah and her uncle's name is Jake and they live in I think it's the Colorado mountains where they're snowed in quite a few months of the year and Tiernan is very emotionally messed up right now her parents didn't give her the attention she needed they were very obsessed with each other they had this all-consuming love and they didn't have a lot of room for having a kid and Tiernan is just she needs some love she needs something to do she needs a purpose and she hasn't really had that before this is a penelope douglas if you don't know who penelope penelope douglas is she writes erotic romances this book has a lot of taboos in it it has an age gap taboo an age gap like with an uncle she's not blood related to any of these people but that's happening also both of her step cousins have a thing for her to varying degrees and the lines on the back, which totally made me want this, said, one of them has her, the other one wants her, but he, he's going to keep her. So this is dark. This is a dark erotic novel. Check out my review if you want to know more. Part of it is non-spoilers. But Penelope Douglas, she doesn't do anything by halves. This was like a surprise release, basically. And it was good. I liked it a lot. So check out my review for that. Next, I read, next we have the books from my 24-hour readathon that I did, which was really fun. So I read Uncharted, which is a little novella that goes along with On the Island, which I read in December. Um, that was a beautiful, beautiful age gap contemporary romance about this, um, about this tutor and her student who gets stuck on an island for a very long time and fall in love. 
this is about um Owen and Kalia and Owen also spent some time on the same island that our characters from the last book did. Um, this is a novella, so I don't want to spoil it, but he, this book starts, I think it's like five years after the previous book. And this book begins with him showing up at TJ and Anna's house to tell them a story. And that's what this novella is. And it still made me cry. It's only 122 pages, but if you've read On the Island, you really need to read this one too. Then I read Love Her Loser, which my sister has because my sister was just here and she's heard me raving about these books and so she took it away with her already. But this book, oh, you'll see when you read, when you watch my 24 hour readathon, um, I was so emotional reading a lot of these books. That book was so good. It's about this couple Dominic and Rosie and they've been together well they've been together since they were teenagers Dominic was a marine or is a marine you're a marine for life um and he had done a couple tours and he came back a little bit different um and they don't connect the same way they used to as teenagers and Rosie who loves Dominic with everything she is just can't handle the mundaneness of their relationship anymore they have sex once a week they don't really communicate. She doesn't feel supported. Doesn't feel like he needs her around besides their Tuesday sex date. And she's ready to end it. So she leaves him. And Dominic, this is kind of his wake up call. He thinks he's doing everything he can to support his wife and have a good marriage and provide for her and give her everything she needs. And he's shocked to find out that she hasn't felt loved by him in a very long time. And so that starts the story and this was so powerful for me because the premise of it is that Rosie gives him one more chance in the form of she's going to pick the craziest therapy that she can and try to basically scare him away with that he won't go through with the therapy. And so there are some really fun things and the therapist, he brings up love languages and you know I love that if you've been around for a while. A lot of you are new though, but I read quite a, I, I found a couple books last year that had to do with love languages, which is something that I really believe is important for all our relationships, not just romantic ones, but it's especially important with your partner. Um, you can look up Stephen Curtis Chapman has books about this. Is it Stephen Curtis Chapman? That might be wrong. I might've made that up. I'll put up, I'll put a link down below where you can check out the five language languages, but in this one, they basically find out that they have been neglecting each other's love language or showing their love in ways they can't understand. And so Dominic supporting and providing and keeping a roof over their head is what he sees as showing Rosie he loves her. Well, Rosie needs words and she needs him to tell her that he loves her and supports her and believes in her dreams. And he does feel all those things, but he's never told her. And Rosie realizes that she hasn't shown him she loved him in any like tangible way besides sexually for a very long time and she's very shocked to realize that he isn't the only one who'd given up on their or he's not the only one wrecking their relationship neither one of them has given up that's the point of this so it was so beautiful it was five stars all of these are five stars right now you should really check it out this to me is just in a completely different class than fixer up was and I loved fixer up I read that last year I had a great time but love her or lose her just tore me open it was so beautiful I loved it then I read the bride test that day as well and I gave this book five stars as well this is the next this was the next book in the kiss quotient series and oh my word this one hurt me so much as well so this one is about Kai and Kai is on the autism spectrum. This is the same like the kiss quotient. She was also on that. Um, and then this one is about Esme as well, who Kai's mother goes to um, Ho Chi Minh City and finds is trying to find a bride for Kai. So she basically brings Esme over to the States on a short term work visa so that she can try to basically seduce and win over Kai for the summer. And the mother says, well, if it doesn't work out, then I'll send you back home. You haven't lost anything, but this will be a good opportunity for you. And so this is really beautiful because 
a lot of Esme is based off of Helen Huang's mother and there's a beautiful afterword that really like affected me as well as um, uh, Helen is also on the autism spectrum and so this is own voices and it's beautiful it's so good um, but this one this one hurt me a lot too I cried the last like 60 pages of this because Kai just doesn't see love the same way other people do he doesn't believe that he can love someone even though all of his actions show differently and uh, so it's very hard for Esme because she feels all these feelings for him and he can't like give them back to her the way that she needs. And so it's really, it's really heartbreaking, but it's beautiful and it ended too quickly. That's my like, if I would ding it at all, it's that Helen Wong does, did this with both where as soon as you're like, oh, they're going to be together. It's just poof over. And I like need a little bit of wind down time because I was crying the last 60 pages. And then when it's you know, it's just over. I was like, you can't do this to me. Like I need more going on, but it was, it was so good. I read Just Ella, which uh, I had to send back to Murphy because I annotated it for her. Um, Just Ella is a book about Cinderella, who it's what happens after the ball, basically. So she's won the prince. She's living in the castle, being turned into a lady, um, awaiting to marry Prince Charming, and she realizes that she's gotten very complacent since living in the palace. And she's lost a lot of the fire that she had when she had to fight every day. Because um, this princess, this Ella, she was very sassy for her stepmother. She didn't just lay over and take it like maybe some Disney versions did. And she realizes she's lost a lot of that. And she also realizes that she doesn't even maybe love Prince Charming. And what is she going to do to get out of it? It's a very short book. It's only 189 pages. I read this first in middle school when it was age appropriate. And it was very fun rereading this for Murphy and annotating in her book. And I had a great time. And it's five stars because it can't be anything else. Next, I'm going to try to speed this up, guys. I'm so bad. Next, I read How Rory Thorne Destroyed the Multiverse by Kay Easton. I have a full review for this one please check it out. This book is freaking fantastic. It is not what I expected it to be. Nobody else is talking about this book. I am trying to single-handedly push it off to the universe because it was so good. This is a fairy tale retelling of Sleeping Beauty in space where Sleeping Beauty actually got some very powerful gifts from the fairies who gifted her, including the curse of never being happy with mediocrity and always being able to see the truth in the lies. So no one can lie to her. She knows what they're saying. She also is the heir to the this one planet at the beginning of the book. And she needs to marry well because there's a war going on. And the best way to end the war is going to be a marriage alliance. And at the start of this book, um, Rory gets sent to the planet where her betrothed is to start acclimating herself there because she needs to marry on her 18th birthday and it's like six months before her birthday. And she brings with her the royal vizier, whose name is Rupert, and he used to be the vizier to her father and he comes with as a diplomat, as well as her bodyguard, who is this feisty woman who is like kind of part cyborg because she has a mechanical eye and a mechanical hand and she reminds me of cinder except not in her personality but like in that part of her um and there is a suspicious plot afoot at the planet she goes to stay at and she's not content to sit around and wait and it was beautiful the way the story is told is told in the super cool like like the narrator's this kind of like sassy chronicler because it's called the Thorn Chronicles. And I, be I believe it's supposed to be a duology. Um, maybe about a different part of the multiverse. They haven't told us. Um, there's, n However, this could be read as a standalone, in my opinion. Because we do have like a conclusion to everything at the end of this. Um, but the author on their Twitter has said that they are writing a second one, but I don't know if it's a direct sequel or if it will be something else. But this book was amazing. It was sci-fi. It was fairy tale. It's definitely great for everyone. I would suggest this to men and women so hard because it was so sassy. It was so amazing. Rory is so great and you really, really need to read this. You need to read this book, guys. It's so good. 
Next, I read A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. I hate when people put stickers on my book. It makes me angry. Um, this book is the first in the Spindle Cove series. I finally read it, guys. I literally read every <laughs> other book all around it. I read crossover novels, and finally, I'm reading this one. Um, I actually read the fourth one in this series on accident because they weren't numbered or like listed correctly and I hate that but this one is about um the new Earl of Radcliffe who goes by Bram and then we have Susanna and Susanna is the one who kind of like set up Spindle Cove she had some bad stuff happen in her past to her and so her father who is like a cannon inventor and like different kinds of cannons and like black powder he's inventing for the crown and so her father sets up this place for her and these different women who have either been rejected by society or they don't fit in perfectly or they have different ailments that aren't necessary like super medical but just need some R&R. &R. These women get sent there. Susanna takes care of them, helps build their confidence, gives them a place to rest and then sometimes they go back into society and have a successful life there and other times they stay there and become part of the community. There aren't a ton of men in that area. It's There's a few, and then mostly it's like older gentlemen or like children. And then Bram comes to town with his um, with a small group of men. And Bram has been injured in the war. There's always a war going on in England. That's just how it goes. And he's looking, he knows Susanna's father, and he's looking to get a recommendation from him to get... A new mission because nobody wants to send him on a new mission with his injury and Bram is like that's stupid I can still fight and these two meet when a bunch of sheep run by and knock him down and Susanna tries to help him out <laughs> and that's our meet cute is her falling on top of him after some sheep have run over <laughs> and it was adorable it's Tessa Dare it's funny it's cute it's sappy it'll make you cry it was great it was great okay here we go just Three more left. We can do this. So then I read For Real. And I can't remember who this is by. And I'm sorry about that. But again, there'll be a picture up here. Don't mind this horrible cover. This is an ebook. This is Kindle Unlimited. Nope. Did I purchase this one? I had to buy this one. I bought this one. And the cover is horrendous. But the story is so good. So, <laughs> oh, it's so good. So this is, this is BDSM book. And this is about, this is about this washed up sub who he's been being a sub for the last like 20 years or so. I think he's like 40 or 38. He's like 38 or 39. He's almost 40. And he's just not getting what he used to get out of the BDSM lifestyle. He was in a long-term relationship with uh, another man for a while. Um, well, not, he's gay. That's the point. He was in a long-term relationship with a man and they broke up six years ago and he's still pining after this guy and not like pining, but he just can't get over him. And so since then, he's basically just had partners like one at a time when he like really needs you know, sex, he'll do that. Um, but he's also not the same like level of like people I've seen before in books. Like he doesn't need to have it all the time, but he just hasn't been getting anything out of it. And then one night at his favorite club, he's talking with his friends and this 19 year old comes in and he just seems really out of place. He's really awkward. He's still got acne. Um, he's uh, looking really uncomfortable and our man goes up to talk to him and is like, Hey, what's up? What's going on? And they start a conversation because he's just drawn to this kid and he's like, I don't think you're supposed to be here. You look too young. And he's like, Hey, I'm 19. Like, and I know what I want. I'm a dominant, but I've never got to try it yet because you know, the boyfriends I've been dating, they weren't into that. And I just, I don't even know how to express it, but I have the desires and I don't know how to do it. And our main character just drops to his knees and is like, try it on me. And he just, so it starts as where it's going to be a one night stand because he feels, our main character, he like feels so weird too, that he has these feelings for a 19 year old because he feels old and like 
not cool and sometimes people will call him this guy's dad and it's it's weird so there was a lot of things I liked about this because it was an age gap um it's a gay age gap and also it was amazing because he's the sub but he's like helping this dom like find his way and he just gets kind of like revitalized by this relationship because he's also like the kid is so eager to be good and to um, make it good for him and he just like he just revitalizes him and it was a really beautiful story and he helps him get over the love that he had and just helps him have a reason for things and it was really good it was really good and I had a great time with it and again I cried and it was five stars and it's so funny to me how these come around I was talking with my sister about it and we will about the next ones I'm going to talk to as well where it sounds like it just totally wouldn't be my thing but the thing I found over the last two years of reading these Kindle Unlimited books that just sound way outside of my comfort zone or sound like ooh you know sometimes you sometimes you just read what a book's about and you're like oh that's not for me but this one was suggested on the Faded Mates, uh, or not Faded Mates, but on Sarah McLean's website. She just has the this list of recommendations and a little bit of blurb about it. And I just wanted to try it because it, the like catch of like a sub who's like tired with the scene. He feels old and washed up. And then a kid, like a teen basically helps him get it back. It just really interests me. Also, it's British. It takes place in the UK. So that was kind of funny too, that it was two like British men and I just really liked it. It was really fun. There is lemon meringue pie involved. There's a recipe for the lemon meringue pie at the end and I just really liked it. So give it a try. It was really touching. It was really touching. All right. The last two we're talking about is a duology. There's also a novella that comes after, but I didn't like that as much. I don't feel like it added anything to the story. But I read Asking For It and Begging For It by Lila Pace. So I had seen these books come up before when I read um, another book in this genre that I didn't like. And so trigger warning for this. This books are about um, this woman who she was raped by her sister's well, he's now her husband. At the time, he was her boyfriend. And her sister and her mother didn't believe her that he raped her. They, this guy was really rich. He said that she came on to him and that he'd only kissed her and that she made everything up because she was jealous. And nobody believed her. And since he did that to her when she was, he raped her when she was 14, ever since then, she can't, have a satisfying encounter without imagining like rape as an aspect and now I'm probably like demonetized for saying that now that's something I have to worry about it's hard talking about these books but sh that's just something that she needs so she doesn't have to necessarily have someone like that doesn't have to be like part of her, the encounter but in her mind for it to be satisfying, she has to imagine that she's being forced. So the start of this duology, which the first time I read the thing about this, it didn't sound good. And then again, I saw this on Sarah McLean's website and I was like, okay, she is very like careful about what she suggests. Like this isn't going to be the same as like when I read Anna Zare's book about a guy who like kidnapped someone and literally like raped her until she loved him. Like this was a case of, at the beginning of our book, Vivian is at a party and her ex-boyfriend, who she has shared her fantasy with before, but he wasn't okay with it, which is perfectly fine. He gets really drunk and he starts saying he misses her and that he wishes he'd been able to give her what she wanted. And he says it out loud and a lot of people overhear it, including this man named Jonah, who... Um, Vivian is a graduate student and he's a professor. They're in different like parts of the, the college that they work at. They're two different parts, but that's why he's at this party. And so he overhears it. And then he walks out and meets Vivian outside and says, Hey, if that's true, if what he said is true, and that is something that you 
are looking for, he's like, I could be your guy for this because I like to be brutal, but I've never found someone that I could do that with. I've never found someone that it would be okay with them. And so he's never done it. And this is a really hard to set up. And Vivian completely has all the thoughts that you would have because that's the thing for her. She wants that in a fantasy, but she can't imagine who the man would be that would be okay with pretend raping someone because what is the problems that this person has that they would be willing to do that. And so that's this like problem that she's in is she has this fantasy. That's the only way she can enjoy what's going on. But who would be the man who would fulfill that and not be like a psychopath himself? So Jonah has his reasons. They set up, you know, just kind of the way you would almost set up like a BDSM situation. They have a safe word. They have all these rules. She actually like sets a like preset email that if she doesn't, <laughs> If she doesn't show back up at work on Monday morning, that like look into Jonah. So she she literally sets all the precautions possible and then they go about letting this situation play out. And the next two books that like the the rest of book that follow, you know, we we see like because the other thing that's so great about this is Vivian's in therapy. She is currently seeing a therapist about this. This isn't just someone who hasn't tried to work through her trauma. She's been seeing a therapist once a week for like five years. And her therapist really helps her talk through like what she's feeling and why she needs this. And they're, she's trying to work through the shame of there are women that this happens to and it is the worst thing that ever happens to them. Like the thing that happened to her as a child was the worst thing that had ever happened to her. So why does she want this as a pleasure inducing thing? And, you know, why does Jonah want to do this? And with Jonah, it's very interesting because in his real life and, you know, obviously these two end up in a relationship, in his normal relationship, he doesn't like need that the same way that like, Vivian needs it to get off. He just enjoys it with his partner because of some trauma he has in his past. But where things get sticky for them is that Jonah and Vivian, as they fall in love, Jonah doesn't need that other part as much. He can also just enjoy time with Vivian. Well, with Vivian, she needs it. And so for Jonah, it eventually starts to feel like I want to be in love with you. I want to make love with you. I don't want to be pretending to rape you all the time for this. And so anyway, I'm talking too much about this. This is hard to explain. You've probably already clicked off if you're not interested, but it was fascinating. So it's asking for it and begging for it. I already ordered physical copies of these because, you know, like any of these books that I've explained, and there's some really weird ones, you know, Credence and For Real and Asking For It. Like, they are odd. I realize that. But because I've been more open and willing to try different kinds of romances this past year and a half, I found so many that just touched me on a completely different level than I expected. And I didn't know that I could feel that way about them and that they could touch me so much. And Jonah, he has some horrible things in his past that you will discover later on. And they have to redefine their lines and redefine their rules and change what's allowed because it was different when they were strangers acting something out. What is it when you're in a relationship with someone and you still have, like you're able to be so open about the most personal things about you, like what it takes for you to be satisfied but to share the stories behind those, that's a completely different level of like intimacy and trust to share. So anyway, there you go. That was a five star. They were amazing. I cried in those ones too. So anyway, well, that's been my part two. I'm really glad that I did split this in half. Maybe next month I'll have to do three parts to this. But yeah, 29 books this month. I mean, last year I started out the year with 20 books. So it's not like I've you know, I think the most I've ever read in a month ever was that last January. So I don't know if that'll continue. The next two months, I have a lot going on, but I always seem to make time for it. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you somehow made it all the way to the end of this, you are the real MVP. I love you so much. I put up new videos three to four times a week. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell um, for notifications whenever I upload. If you want to watch some more videos, you can do so right now. Thank you. Bye.